Today we're going to be learning all about isosceles triangles and how they work when we are solving problems in geometry. So first let's take a look at what isosceles triangles are. Okay, so remember we talked already about different types of triangles and one of them was called the isosceles triangle and an isosceles triangle is a triangle that has two sides that are equal in length. Okay, so what we're going to do over here is I want you to take a separate piece of paper and I want you on that piece of paper to draw an isosceles triangle. Now, it doesn't have to be super accurate. We're not going to be using a compass for this or anything. We're just going to draw an isosceles triangle by drawing two lines that are identical length. So I'm going to make this a 12 centimeter line over there and I'm going to do another 12 centimeter line over here from that point over there and then we can join those up to make our third side. Okay, once you've drawn your isosceles triangle, I then want you to clearly mark which sides in that triangle are equal. So I made this side 12 centimeters and that side 12 centimeters. So they are equal to each other. So I'm going to mark those equal like this. Okay, so just do your, your lines through them so that they are marked in the same way as each other so that you can clearly see that they are equal. Once you've done that, I want you then to take your scissors and I want you to cut it out. And try and cut it as neatly as you can on the lines. Okay. So now that is what I've ended up with. Now your isosceles triangle will undoubtedly look different to this. You might have had a wider isosceles triangle. You might have had a narrower one. It doesn't really matter. What matters is that it is isosceles in, a, in that two of the sides are the same length as each other. Once you've done that, I want you then to take this isosceles triangle and I want you to fold it in half so that the sides that are equal are on top of each other. Okay, and I want you to fold it as neatly as you can. So this corner over here needs to be cut right in half like that. And those need to be lying on top of each other like that. And then once you've done that, we're going to open it up and have a look at some things. Okay, so now I've got my isosceles triangle like that, that is folded. And once you've done that, what you can actually do now is you can take some glue and you can stick it down so that it opens like a book. So I'm going to take this, I'm going to just put glue on the back and I'm going to stick it down like this. Okay, so now my triangle can open up like this, like a book. But when it's closed, I want you to take note of the fact that this angle that is lying on top of the other angle is exactly the same size as the other angle. These two angles are identical in size. If you have done your isosceles triangle with equal sides like this, then when you fold it like this, those should be exactly the same size angles. And that is what we need to know about isosceles triangles. So let's mark those and show that they are equal. So when we're marking angles to show that they're equal, we do it like this. We put a little arc in either in both angles and you can do two arcs to show that they're equal or three arcs to show that they're equal. So long as you've marked the two angles in the same way as each other, it means that they are equal to each other. Okay, so now I can see that these angles are equal to each other when those sides are equal to each other. These are what we call the base angles of our isosceles triangle. They are the angles that are directly opposite the sides that are equal to each other. Now, please don't get confused and think, oh, but base means bottom, because what happens if I turn this around like that? Now, suddenly, those two angles are not at the bottom of the triangle anymore, but it still is the base of my isosceles triangle, even though it's not in that 
um, in the right orientation for it to actually be at the bottom, it doesn't necessarily mean that it is, or it doesn't mean that it's not the base angles anymore. Those are still the base angles, no matter what way around this triangle is facing. Okay. So the base angles of an isosceles triangle will always be equal to each other. And the base angles are the angles that are opposite the equal sides. The angle that is made by or between the equal sides is not equal, okay? It's the other two angles, the ones that are opposite our equal sides that are equal to each other. Okay, so now let's go and write this all down nicely for ourselves. So first, if I draw another triangle like this, and I say that these two sides over here are equal to each other in this triangle, triangle A, B, C, okay? Then what I can say is that angle B will be equal to angle C. And the reason I know that is because this is an isosceles triangle. So remember when we are doing geometry, anytime we make a statement, now this is a statement, I'm saying one thing is equal to another thing, and it's not something they told me. They didn't tell me that B is equal to C. I am saying because I know that those sides are equal, I can therefore conclude that angle B must be equal to angle C because this is an isosceles triangle. And again, just like we were doing in the last lesson where we were doing the interior angles of a triangle, we have to label the triangle we're talking about. So this is isosceles triangle A, B, C. And then I say which sides are equal to each other. In this case, it is A, B is equal to A, C. So if I have a triangle where I can see the two sides are equal, I can use my knowledge about the fact that it is an isosceles triangle to then say the base angles, the angles that are opposite my equal sides, must also be equal. So then I can say angle B must be equal to angle C. And my reason is because it's an isosceles triangle, I, lay, I name the triangle and I say which sides were equal to each other. Okay, and that's how I knew that this is a, an isosceles triangle. The fact that those are equal is how I knew that those, that's an isosceles triangle. Okay, so now let's do, uh, I also want to write this another way around as well, the converse of this. If you happen to have a triangle like this, let's just move that up. So if you have a triangle like this, where you are told that the sides, or you're not told that the sides are equal, you're told that the angles are equal. So you've got triangle ABC. And now you're told this angle is equal to that angle. Now, the definition of an isosceles triangle is that it is a triangle that has two sides equal. So looking at that, by the definition, we can't automatically say that it's an isosceles triangle. But when we know that these two angles are equal, the converse of what we did over here, in other words, doing it in the opposite order, in the backwards, is to say if the angles are equal, then the opposite sides must also be equal. So if these two angles are equal, I should be able to say that that side is equal to that side. So now I can say over here, AB is equal to AC, okay? And the reason I can say that is because in triangle ABC, angle B equals angle C. Okay, so over here, I haven't said that it's an isosceles triangle because the way it's been presented to me, I haven't been told that it's an isosceles triangle. This means an isosceles triangle. But because I can say because those angles are equal, that means that these sides are equal, which means that it is an isosceles triangle. Okay, but based on the definition of an isosceles triangle, the fact that the sides were not, I wasn't told the sides are equal, I can't immediately say that it is an isosceles triangle but I can deduce that it's an isosceles triangle by saying if the angles are equal, it means that the sides must be equal, which means that it must be an isosceles triangle. Okay, so that is 
just basically what we're going to be using while we are doing the problems we're going to be working on today. The first one we're going to look at is this one over here. Okay, so in this triangle, we have been given triangle ABC. We need to work out the size of X, and we've been told that AB is the same length of B as BC, and we've been told that angle B is 110 degrees. Okay, so we need to work out what the size of X is in this example. Now, we're going to be using a couple of things in this. First, we're going to be using the fact that this is an isosceles triangle, and we're also going to be using the interior angles of the triangle, the sum of the interior angles of the triangle that we learned about in the last lesson. Okay, so let's have a look at how we would do this example. Okay, so first of all, I need to start off by saying, in this example, I have got 110 degrees and I've got X, but if I don't know this, that would not be enough for me to work out what the size of X is, because I don't know what that angle is, okay? But because they've told me that AB is equal to BC, I know, because this is an isosceles triangle, now remember, even though this is not at the bottom, the angles opposite the equal sides are what we call the base angles. They are going to be equal to each other. So if this is X, then that angle must also be X because these are opposite the equal sides. Okay, so I'm going to start off by saying that. I'm going to say that angle C must also be X. Okay, so I know that angle C is X. And now I need to give a reason for that. So my reason is going to be the fact that this is an isosceles triangle, and I know that because AB is equal to BC. Okay, so once I've done that, I can now go and put that information into my diagram. If I know that this is X, I can write the X over there. As soon as I've said something on, in my book over here on my page, I can then fill that information in on my diagram. Okay, and then I can use it. So now I know that this is X and that is also X. Now that I've got something in all three of my angles, I can use the sum of the interior angles of the triangle to work out what X is actually equal to. So now my next step is to say, if I add these all up, they must add up to 180 degrees. So X plus X plus 110 equals 180 degrees. And my reason that I know that is because this is the sum of the angle of the interior angles of triangle ABC. Okay, so now let's go and work that out. We've got an equation now that we can solve. So x plus x equals 180 degrees minus 110 degrees. This is 2x equals 70 degrees. So therefore, x must be equal to 35 degrees. Okay, so now I know that x is 35 degrees. And if we were to go and check it, we'd be able to say, well, that's 35, that's also 35, that makes 70, and add that to 110, that makes 180 degrees. Okay, so that's what we do in that example. Now let's have a look at another example before I give you some to do on your own. Now this example over here uses the exterior angle of the triangle ABC that we learned about in the last lesson as well. So remember we said in the last lesson that the exterior angle of a triangle is formed when one of the sides of the triangle is extended and you end up with an angle outside the triangle between that extended line and the triangle. Okay, so that is your exterior angle and that is equal to the sum of the opposite interior angles. So this is equal to that angle plus that angle. So I need to know what these two are to be able to work out what X is, okay? Now, I've been told that in this triangle, ABC, AC is equal to BC. So I know that this is an isosceles triangle. So the first thing I'm going to do, just like I did in the last one, is I need to have something to put into this angle over here, and I can do that by saying, because this is an isosceles triangle, I know that this is X. That means that that must be the same. It must be equal, because they are both opposite 
the equal sides. Okay, so let's have a look at that example quickly. Okay, so in this one over here, the first thing I'm going to do is just like I did in the previous example, I'm going to say what A is equal to, that A is equal to X as well, because then I can use that to help me to work out what X is equal to. Okay, so A, angle A is also X, and the reason I know that is because this is an isosceles triangle, ABC, and the reason I know it's an isosceles triangle is because AC is equal to BC, they told me that. Okay, so now I know that this is X, as soon as I've got, got it over there, I can fill it in on my diagram, so I can put an X inside here. Now, the exterior angle of the triangle is equal to the sum of the opposite interior angles. So this plus that must be equal to 65. So that's what I'm going to do now. So I'm going to say x plus x is equal to 65. And the reason I know that is because of the exterior angle of triangle ABC. because this angle over here is the exterior angle. So now I'm going to go and solve that equation. So this is 2x equals 65 degrees. So therefore, x is equal to 32.5 degrees. So that's what we should get for those two angles over there for x. Okay, so now I'm going to give you some that you're going to do for yourself. The first one that you're going to do is this one over here. It's just a nice, simple one to ease you into this. You need to work out the value of P in this example. And I'm going to give you one minute to solve this. Okay, so let's see what you got for that. So in this example, we have triangle ABC again, and we have to work out the size or the value of P when we've been told that angle C is 70 degrees and AB is equal to AC. So now we know because AB is equal to AC, this is an isosceles triangle. When I know that this is an isosceles triangle, I know that two side or two angles will also be equal to, you, to each other. The angles that are opposite the equal side. So let's see which angles those are. This angle is opposite that equal side and this angle is opposite that equal side. So these two angles must be equal to each other. So I can straight away say that P is equal to 70 degrees and the reason I know that is because this is an isosceles triangle ABC and the way that I knew that there's an isosceles triangle is because they told me that AB is equal to AC. Okay, so that's what you should have got for question A. Right, now you're going to go to, going to go on to question B. And in this one, you have to work out the size or the value of S in triangle DEF. And I'm going to give you one minute again to do this example.
Okay, so let's go through that example. So in this one, we had triangle DEF. Angle F is S, is equal to S. They told us that angle D is 50 degrees and DE is equal to DF. So obviously we know that this is an isosceles triangle. So where are our base angles in this isosceles triangle? The base angles are going to be the angles that are opposite the equal sides. So this angle over here and that angle over there. Those are the base angles of my triangle, which means that these two angles must be equal to each other. So if this one is S, that one must also be S. So now I can say that angle E is equal to S. And the reason I know that is because this is an isosceles triangle, DEF, with DE equal to DF. Okay, so now that I know that, I can then put that S in here and use that to help me to work out the value of S. So now I can use the interior angles of the triangle. I can say, when I have a triangle, the interior angles must add up to 180. So I can say S plus S plus 50 must equal 180 degrees. And the reason I know that is because of the rule that I have for the interior angles of the triangle. And here I'm working with the sum of the interior angles of triangle DEF. Okay, so now we can go and solve our equation. So I've got S plus S equals 180 degrees minus 50 degrees. 2s is therefore equal to 130 degrees, which means that s must be 65 degrees. So that's what you should have got for question B. Okay, so let's go on to question C. Right, in question C, you've got triangle PQR. Now for this one, you've been told what angle P is, it's 47 degrees. You have to work out what angle Q is. Okay, so I'm going to give you one minute again to solve this problem. Okay, so let's go through that example. So here I've got my triangle, triangle PQR. They told me that PQ is equal to QR, which means that my opposite angles, the angles that are opposite the equal sides, this one over here and that one over there must be equal to each other. So if this angle is 47, then this angle must also be 47. So now I can say that angle R is equal to 47 degrees and the reason I know that is because this is an isosceles triangle PQR with PQ equal to QR okay so now I've got that information the next thing I need to do is write that in on my triangle over here, 47 degrees, so that I can use it to help me to work out T, because my goal is to work out T. So to work out T, I can say, again, I've got the interior angles of the triangle. I've got 47, 47, and T, and they must add up to 180 degrees. So I can say that 47, or T plus 47 degrees plus another 47 degrees 
must be equal to 180 degrees and the reason I know that is because I know about the interior angles the sum of the interior angles of triangle PQR that they must add up to 180 degrees and then we can go and solve our equation so I've got over here T equals 180 minus 47 minus 47 and that will give you 86 degrees so that's what you should have got for question C okay and then question D now this one is a little bit more involved for you to solve this one so I'm going to give you two minutes to try and work this one out please be aware you have to work out the value of X and the value of y for this example. Okay, so let's go through that example. So in question D, we had triangle SUT, and we've been told that SU is equal to UT. They're the same length as each other, which means that we have an isosceles triangle over here. I know that the base angles are the angles that are opposite the equal sides. So this angle and that angle will be equal to each other okay which means that if this is x that must also be x so what i can do now is i can say that angle s is equal to x and my reason for that is that this is an isosceles triangle with su equal to tu okay so now i've got that and i can write that x in my diagram over here so that i can use it okay next thing i'm going to do is i'm going to say now i've got x there x there and three x here i'm going to use those to work out what x is based on the fact that all three of them have to add up to 180 because they are the interior angles of my triangle okay so x plus x plus 3x equals 180 degrees and my reason for that is because of the sum of the interior angles of triangle STU okay now I'm going to go and solve my equation so through x plus x plus 3x is 5x 
equals 180 degrees. When you divide by 5, that gives you 36 degrees. So therefore, x is equal to 36 degrees. Okay, so now that I know that, I can use it to work out what y is. Okay, so I'm going to go and fill in that 36 degrees over here just so I can see it. And over here. And I could also put over here as 3 times 36, but I'm not really going to need it. I'm going to be using now the exterior angle because y over here is the exterior angle of triangle STU, which means that it is equal to the sum of the opposite interior angle. So if I know what these two angles are equal to, I can use them to work out what y is equal to. Okay, so if I have the sum of my uh, opposite interior angles, I can say y is equal to 36 degrees plus another 36 degrees. And my reason for that is exterior angle of triangle STU which means I can then just simplify that and that gives me 72 degrees. So therefore I know that y is 72 degrees. So now I've solved for x and I've solved for y as well. Okay, now we're going to go on to another example which is going to be a bit more complicated, a little bit more complex. In this example we have got two triangles that are attached to each other, they share a line. We have got information about some of the lengths of the sides, we've got information about uh, some of the angles, we've been given an x over here, a y over there, and a z over here. Now this is the first time we've had a variable that we have to solve for which is not in an angle. This is on a line, which means we're going to be finding the length of this line over here. Okay, so we need to work out x, y, and z in this example. Okay, so first let's go and take a look at what we can actually look at, what, what we can figure out with this example over here. Okay, so first of all, like I said in the last uh, lesson, we normally will try and do things in alphabetical order. Normally it will work out well if we do it that way. Okay, so I've got x over here. And I'm going to see if I can solve that one first. So in the triangle that X is in, I have been given angle B is 65 degrees and angle C, this one over here, ACB, is 50 degrees. And I know that that's X, so I need to work out X. I have got the other two angles, so I can use the interior angles of the triangle and say that they must add it to 180 degrees to work out X. So for this example, I can say X plus 65 plus 50 equals 180 degrees. And my reason for that is the sum of the interior angles of triangle ABC. Now remember it is very important for us to write down the name of the triangle, especially now that we are working with diagrams that have more than one triangle in them. So triangle ABC is the triangle I'm looking at at the moment. Okay, so now let's go and solve for X. So X is equal to 180 degrees minus 65 degrees minus 50 degrees. And that gives us 65 degrees. Okay. So now I can write that, now that I've worked it out, I can write it on my diagram so that I'll be able to use it for other things that I need to work out. Okay, so now I've got X. The next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to see if I can work out what Y is. So Y is in triangle ACD over here. And in this triangle, I've been told that those two sides are equal to each other, which means that it's isosceles. And if I look at this, the angles that are opposite those two sides, it's these two angles over there. So angle C1 and angle D. Okay, be careful. This is not saying that this is one degree. It's angle C1. It's just there to help you to be able to label it more easily. Okay, so angle C1 and angle D must be equal to each other. So because I know what angle D is, I can say angle C1 must also be equal to 75 degrees. Okay, so angle C1 equals 75 degrees. And the reason I know that is because it is one of the base angles of that isosceles triangle. So I can say isosceles triangle, and in this case it's triangle ACD, 
with AC equal to AD. Okay, so now I can fill that in. So I know that this angle here is also 75 degrees. Now because I know that, I can now use the interior angles of this triangle to work out what Y is, just like I did with the working out the value of X over there. So I can say 75 plus 75 plus Y must equal 180 degrees. Okay, so now my reason for that is the, in, uh, the sum of the interior angles of triangle ACD. Okay, now I'm going to go and solve that equation. So Y is equal to 180 degrees minus 75 degrees minus another 75 degrees, and that gives me 30 degrees. So now I know that y is equal to 30 degrees, so I can fill that in over here in case I need it. Okay, now the next thing I need to do is I need to work out the value of z, which is the length of the line BC. So to do that, the only way I can really do that is by using the lengths of the lines that I've got over here and see if any of them are going to help me. Okay, now I know that AD is equal to AC because they told me that those are equal. So if I'm looking at this triangle, that's a little bit closer to what I'm working with. I can't really use what's in that triangle to help me to work out Z. I need to have in the triangle that Z is part of, okay? So I've got A, B, and I've got A, C. Now, in this example over here, if I knew that this side was equal to one of those two sides, I'd be able to say, okay, it's either 8 centimeters or it's 10 centimeters because this is equal to that. So how can I get to a point where I can say that? Now we're going to look at our angles. We're going to see, is there anything about our angles that is special? If you look over here, I've got 50 degrees. This is 65 degrees. And I worked out that this is also 65 degrees. Now remember, if you have two angles in a triangle, which are equal to each other, it means that the, ang the sides that are opposite those angles, so this side and that side must also be equal to each other, and that means that it's an isosceles triangle, okay? So if this is 65 degrees and that is also 65 degrees, I can then say that this side is equal to that side, which means that it will be 10 centimeters. So let's First say that AC is 10 centimeters, because I haven't got that at the moment. At the moment, I know that it's equal to that side, but it doesn't say here that it is 10 centimeters. So I'm going to go and say over here, AC is equal to 10 centimeters. And the reason I know that is because they told me that AD is equal to AC. So that was given. Okay, so they gave me that information. Now I can use that and I can say over here that BC must also be equal to uh, 10 centimeters, which means that Z, because Z is on BC, okay, that must be 10 centimeters as well. So I can say Z equals 10 centimeters. And the reason I know that, the reason I know that those two sides are equal is because these angles are equal. So in triangle ABC, angle B is equal to angle BAC. Over here, I have to specify what angle A it is because there are two angles there. Okay, so I have to say BAC, I can't just say angle A. And that is how I can work out the length of Z. Okay, so now I'm going to give you a couple that you're going to try for yourself. The first one is this one over here, question A. We've got triangle SVT, and it has been divided up into two triangles by the line SU. You need to work out the value of A in this example. So I'm going to give you two minutes to try and solve this.
Okay, so let's take a look at how to do this example. So in this one, we've got over here triangle VST, which is divided up by the line SU over here. And we've been told that SV is the same length as SU. We've also been told that angle V is 75 degrees, angle T is 40 degrees, and we need to work out angle, we need to work out A, which is at angle UST. Okay, so what we're going to start off by doing is I've got information over here, 75 degrees, and I've got information over here, but if I just try and use the information that's inside the triangle where A is, I don't have enough information. What I could do is I could find that angle, and then I could use the interior angles of that triangle, or I could find this angle and then use it as the exterior angle of that triangle to work out what A is. The easier way to do it is going to be to work out this angle over here because if you look at triangle SVU, it is an isosceles triangle, which means that the angles that are opposite these equal sides, that angle over there and that angle over there, are equal to each other. So if this is 75 degrees, then I know that this will also be 75 degrees. So let's go and put that down. So that's the very first thing we're going to do. We are going to say for question A that angle VUS, remember we have to specify which angle at U we're talking about, so we have to label the angle properly. Angle VUS is equal to 75 degrees. And the reason I know that is because this is an isosceles triangle. Uh, SUV with VS equal to SU. Okay, so now I know that this is 75 degrees of here, so I can fill that in like that. Once I've got that, this angle is the exterior angle of this triangle SUT. If you look over here, if we cover that up, we ignore it, then this line over here is actually just an extension of the line TU. And this angle has been formed by that extended line or between the extended line and the triangle over here. So that is our exterior angle. And it is equal to the sum of the opposite interior angles, which would be my 40 degrees at T and A at angle UST. So now I'm going to use the exterior angle of my triangle to work out the value of A. So I can say that A plus 40 degrees is equal to 75 degrees. And the reason for that is exterior angle of triangle SUT. And now I can go and solve that. And I can say A is equal to 75 degrees minus 40 degrees, which means that A is equal to 35 degrees. So that's what you should have got for question A. Right, now I'm going to give you the last one for today, question B. Now in this example, we've got triangle ABD, which has been split up into two smaller triangles, ABC and ACD. You've been told that AD, AC, and BC are all equal in length. You've been told that angle B is 35 degrees. The angle over here is X, and the angle over here is Y. And you need to work out the values of both X and Y in this example. I'm going to give you two minutes to try and solve this problem.
Okay, so let's go through that example and see how to do it. So first of all, if you look at this example, you can see that there are actually two triangles that are both isosceles attached to each other. Triangle ABC is an isosceles triangle with BC equal to AC. And triangle ACD is also an isosceles triangle with AC equal to AD. And, I'll get, and I'm going to be using the fact that both of those are isosceles in this solution. Now, I need to work out X first, okay? Now, in order to work out X, if you look inside the triangle that X is actually in, I don't have the values of any of the angles in that triangle, okay? I don't know the size of that angle or that angle or that angle. So I'm not going to be able to use the interior angles of that triangle to work out X. But maybe if I use X as an exterior angle of the other triangle, I can work it out. Okay, so if you look over here at this triangle, remember the exterior angle of a triangle is equal to the opposite, the sum of the opposite interior angles. So if I add up this angle and that angle, it would be equal to x. Okay, but I still don't know what that angle is. But in this triangle over here, it is isosceles, which means that the angles equal the opposite side. So here's an equal side, or the angles opposite the equal sides. This is an equal side over here, is equal to that side over there. So if this is 35 degrees, that must also be 35 degrees. So that's the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go and fill that in. I'm going to say that angle BAC equals 35 degrees. And the reason I know that is because this triangle ABC is isosceles. with AC equal to BC. Okay, so now I can go and fill that in on my diagram so that I can use it. Okay, so now I know this angle is 35 and that angle is also 35 and that's going to help me because X, which is the exterior angle of that triangle, if I cover that up, then I just have this triangle and this line has been extended giving me that angle over there which is now exterior it's outside of this triangle over here between the extended line and the triangle okay so this is the exterior angle of the triangle so now x is equal to the sum of the opposite interior angles so it's equal to that angle plus that angle so x equals 35 plus 35 and my reason for that is because of the exterior angle of triangle ABC. Okay, now let's quickly just simplify that and that gives me 70 degrees. So now I know that X is 70 degrees and I can go and fill that in on my diagram because that is going to now be helpful for working out what Y is equal to. Okay, so now let's have a look at the triangle that contains X and Y. Okay, so I've got Y at the top there then over here I've got X, which I now know is 70, and then I don't know this angle yet. But this triangle is also an isosceles triangle. Those two sides are equal, which means that these two angles must also be equal to each other because they are opposite the equal sides. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to say that angle D is equal to 70 degrees as well. And the reason I know that is because this is an isosceles triangle, ACD. With AC equal to AD. Okay, so now I know that this angle is 70 degrees and I can fill it in over there. So once I know that, I now know both of these angles. I just have one angle that I don't know yet, which is at Y, and that I can now work out. So I can say that Y plus the other two angles that I know the values of, which is 70 degrees plus 70 degrees, equals 180 degrees. And that is because of the sum of the interior angles of, in this case, is triangle ACD. And they must always add up to 180 degrees. And now I can go and solve that equation. So I have y equals 180 degrees minus 70 degrees minus another 70 degrees. And that gives me 40 degrees. So now I know that y is 40 degrees 
and x is 70 degrees. And that's where you should have got for question B. And that is how we work with isosceles triangles in geometry. Now that we've learned the concepts in this lesson, it's important to practice, practice, practice. If you haven't already got the worksheet that goes with this video, you can find it by clicking on the link in the description below. The worksheet comes with an extra exercise full of questions for you to work on to master the concepts covered in this lesson. If you found this video helpful, please hit the like button so that others can benefit from it too. Also be sure to subscribe so that you can easily find my other lessons and hit the bell so that you will get notified about lessons as I upload them.